Can anybody say, holy frickin' crap? Because I know that's exactly what I'm saying. Thank God that we have Judge Aileen Cannon. You know, the left keeps disparaging her, saying she's horrible, she doesn't know what she's doing, she's inexperienced and clearly partisan, but she continues to prove the exact opposite. Most importantly, above all, she continues to show us how courageous she is and how important transparency and the truth is in such sensitive matters. Joe Biden's DOJ hound, Jack Smith, just got completely exposed after a good chunk of his redactions were, well, unredacted. And boy, oh boy, is it interesting. What was redacted? You know, some of the most important sensitive information that actually proves that Donald Trump was right and shows that this whole thing was a White House, a Biden White House connected witch hunt. Yep, we have official documents from inside NARA, from inside the government, showing exactly what happened in this classified documents case. And it's pretty much just as horrible as you might think, and it proves Donald Trump 100% right. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. As Jack Smith's little classified documents case falls apart, I think that accounts for 37 indictments here. Jack Smith and Joe Biden and the director of NARA have been fully exposed. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so we're first gonna start off right over here. Once again, I'm bringing you guys all this information thanks to the incredible investigative reporting of Julie Kelly. Please, I mean, for your own benefit, if you really wanna stay informed on these issues, follow Julie Kelly on Twitter. That's at Julie underscore Kelly too. She just released a whole slew of documents showing on one side on the left the redacted version and on the right the unredacted version. Let's first start off here. Early indications of NARA bias. NARA, of course, refers to the National Archives and Records Administration. I'm going to put both the redacted and unredacted versions side by side so you guys can see what they chose to hide from the public. Let's just go ahead and read this whole thing. Almost as soon as President Trump left office, NARA started to work with the White House Office of Records Management under exaggerated claims related to the records handling under the Presidential Records Act. On May 5th of 2021, less than five months after the end of President Trump's term, NARA General Counsel Gary Stern sent an internal email attaching a draft letter to President Trump's PRA representatives. Stern noted that he had several conversations with the White House Office of Records Management and that he had raised some of these concerns directly with David Ferrero, the National Archives and Records Administration's archivist. Stern's draft conceded that things were very chaotic, as they always are in the course of a one-term transition, and he acknowledged that the transfer of the Trump electronic records is still ongoing and won't be complete for several more months. NARA employee then explaining to the FBI that it is not uncommon that Presidential Records Act material collection extends past the close of any presidential administration, sometimes well after the close of any given presidential administration. However, in June of 2021, during an ongoing good faith effort by President Trump's PRA representatives to address issues raised by NARA, Ferrero declared, quote, I am out of patience. Now, of course, most of what I just read to you, especially at the end there, well, that was all redacted. But don't you think that that's relevant information? Essentially, what we're learning is that everything that was ongoing was perfectly normal. It's normal for a president to be holding on to presidential records even after exiting the White House. And this could go on for a very long period of time, especially during a very chaotic one-term transition. They're essentially admitting that it was all perfectly normal. But at one point, an emotional, clearly biased, clearly partisan federal employee, Mr. Ferrero, just declared that he was, quote, out of patience. And so what did they decide to do? Hit Donald Trump with indictments and raid his freaking home. During very, very suspicious timing, right ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. This right here confirms what we've been saying all along. That President Trump did absolutely nothing wrong. He was following typical protocol. There were ongoing good faith interactions between NARA and the former president's office, and of course, Trump directly, yet they raided his home regardless. Holy frickin' moly, now that is a bombshell that I guarantee you the media will not be letting you know about. But it gets even worse. It continues. We're then learning about outrageous lies by Joe Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland and the DOJ and Jack Smith about the independence from the Trump investigation. Here's the redacted version. It's basically all redacted. And here's the unredacted version. In August 30th of 2021, in an email, Ferrero threatened one of President Trump's PRA representatives that he was assuming an alleged and 
and non-existent 24 boxes of records that have, quote, been destroyed and that he was obligated to report it to the Hill, DOJ, and the White House. So a random assumption came from this Ferrero guy, who was, quote, running out of patience, that Trump was destroying 24 boxes. Only problem was those 24 boxes didn't actually exist, and the destruction of those documents never actually happened. But he was obligated to report it to the DOJ, the Hill, and the White House. Give me a frickin' break. On September 1st of 2021, Stern circulated a letter that we could consider sending to the Attorney General about missing Trump records. Then two unidentified individuals began drafting the DOJ referral letter during the first week of September 2021. Stern's email stated that he had informally reached out to the DOJ counsel about this issue and that the White House counsel is now also aware of the issue and has asked that I keep them in the loop to the extent that we make any reference to the White House office of records management. In late September of 2021, without disclosing that NARA had already drafted a referral letter and contacted the DOJ, Deputy White House Counsel Jonathan Sue asked one of President Trump's PRA representatives to permit an unidentified individual to access notes from the Trump administration relating to records handling. Sue then intervened when Stern offered to provide a copy of the notes to President Trump's PRA representative. Could we discuss the process before anything is provided to him? Stern agreed to coordinate on this issue with the Biden administration but informed Sue that the request was atypical. Normally, we would have to provide the records to him per the notification slash review process before we could provide anything to you. Two days later, Stern assured Sue that the PRA representative had not asked to see these records. And so again, a huge freaking bombshell that the media will not tell you about. Joe Biden multiple times claimed that he had nothing to do with this. In fact, the White House didn't even know that this whole thing was going on. That was a lie. They were coordinating since day one, essentially, to weaponize the DOJ in an effort to criminalize President Donald Trump over perfectly normal behavior relating to a former president holding on to documents and coordinating with NARA even post-exiting the White House. That is a huge, huge friggin' bombshell. But let's continue with Julie Kelly's amazing reporting. She writes, Now you know why the insiders like Andrew Weissman and Barb McQuaid are desperate to get rid of Judge Cannon. Without her courage on this matter, incriminating evidence of Biden's White House and DOJ running the investigation from behind the scenes would probably be buried forever. And you know, I forgot to mention something relating to Joe Biden's lies on the issue. Let's really put things into perspective. He tells us, well, he had nothing to do with any of it, even though the White House counsel Council was deeply involved in the process, while at the same time, Joe Biden was clearly illegally in possession of classified documents from the 1970s all the way through his time as vice president. And again, let's play that same clip. How that could possibly happen, how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. He even took to the media and condemned President Trump for holding documents which was considered perfectly normal and par for the course for an exiting president, meanwhile lying about being involved in the process. And at the same time, he also knew that he was illegally holding documents throughout his multiple properties and offices in totally unsafe locations. Holy frickin' bombshell moly. Now this next unredacted document essentially goes on with the same thing. And then there's another document which shows that Biden's Department of Energy was also involved in the cover-up. In the memorandum, the Energy Department's Assistant General Counsel disclosed that the agency's Central Personnel Clearance Index and Clearance Action Tracking System reflected an active Q clearance for President Trump. Based on information information provided by the Office of Environment, Health, Safety, and Security, and documents reviewed by the Office of General Counsel, the Assistant General Counsel instructed the relevant systems be immediately amended and promptly modified to reflect the terminated status of President Trump's Q clearance. The Energy Department concluded that these steps were appropriate as a matter of law based on retroactive interpretation of the terms of President Trump's clearance. After locating this memorandum interspersed with the huge volume of discovery, President Trump requested additional disclosures relating to the the Energy Department's determination and other security clearance issues. The office declined to provide any additional information to date. The productions of the special counsel's office concerning these issues appear to have been limited to a June 15, 2023 FBI document reporting the scattered castles check run for former President Donald J. Trump was negative. According to intelligence community policy guidance, scattered castles is the program name for the IC security clearance repository for all clearance and access determinations. Section 704.2 5G requires that certain historical clearance records be maintained. So from my understanding, so as Julie Kelly puts it, in more <laughs> layman terms, the Biden Department of Energy was also involved in the cover-up, and the DOA discovered after Smith handed down his indictment that Trump had an active security clearance, 
they retroactively terminated it. Holy freaking bombshell moly. They clearly engaged in a cover-up. They colluded with the White House to raid a former president's home ahead of an election. And now they're attempting to throw him in prison on 37 indictments for perfectly normal behavior ahead of the 2024 general. This is completely insane. And there's another document. It continues to be absolutely shocking. This is an email after the FBI's raid on Mar-a-Lago in 2022, where I represent from the National Archives and Records Administration writes about receiving the materials from Florida. The email subject says, the materials from Florida arrived last night. We received 15 bankers boxes and the weather map. Ooh, the weather map. My plan was to glance into each box before I shelved it so I could give y'all a high level review tomorrow. As I fanned through the pile of newspapers at the top of the first box, I found several unfolded classified docs in between some of the newspapers. So I took the boxes to the SCIF. The first box I picked up in the SCIF had a newspaper on top that was post-inauguration day. At that point, I decided to take a closer look to see if there are any other issues that you three, David and Deb, might want to know about sooner than later. There may be others I didn't notice, but here is an overview. The majority of the material consists of newspapers, magazines, and printed news articles. The majority of the items are not in folders, just piled in boxes. Some boxes seem to have things from the same time period. Others have documents for multiple years, there is no information written on the boxes to provide any context. And I wasn't joking about the classified docs, just showing up in the midst of a stack of newspapers, the lack of any organization was consistent throughout the boxes. Quote, thankfully, we got more than newspapers and magazines. There are plenty of original presidential records in there, and many contain Trump handwriting. Once again, more proof that this whole thing was partisan. Quote, thankfully, we got more than newspapers and magazines. In other words, we got them. We got exactly what we need to take him down. That's how I interpret the whole thing. Then let's go later on, where they make a very important admission. Quote, I think one entire box is post-presidential, but there are some items without dates, and there could be some pre-January. January 20 docs that I missed. I'll need to go back through and verify, but without a doubt, the vast, vast majority is post-presidential, meaning they're all documents from Donald Trump's presidential term, post-January 20th, 2017. I also ran across a small amount of post-presidential material in at least two other boxes. I noticed some of the newspapers were from this fall, so this isn't just a box that was created in February of 2021 and was mistakenly stored with the boxes from the residents. So it is clear that some of the boxes were created or altered after the administration. There are also a good number of personal slash political non-PRA docs scattered throughout a few of the boxes most relating to the 2020 election, so not relevant to classified documents. Finally, I have the impression that most of the material is from 2020 and 2019. I need to take another look to see if that is actually true, but if it is, that might open up questions about when they started creating these boxes of random stuff. Let me know if there's something of particular interest you want us to explore before we begin to do a detailed inventory. In other words, they're all presidential documents from president's four-year first term. In other words, Donald Trump's documents, documents that he declassified, documents that he has the right to hold, and he is protected in that holding of those documents by the Presidential Records Act. I mean, holy crap, people. They're essentially admitting that all these documents are personal documents or documents protected by the PRA, yet they chose to indict him either way. And not to mention everything I just showed you guys, they redacted. They didn't want it to show up in the evidence. They essentially tried to hide the truth in their attempt to imprison the former president in their clear bias election interference scam. I mean, wow. Here's the TLDR. All the documents they found, Trump is protected and has the right to hold. The other stuff is all personal. We now have clear evidence that the White House was involved in this entire process well before any of the indictments in the lead up in September of 2021. And we're learning that a lot of these actors at NARA and were clearly acting with bias in collusion with the White House. Two important quotes. Thankfully, we found the classified documents, and it wasn't just magazines and newspapers. And of course, the most concerning quote, Mr. Ferrer's quote, I am out of patience. And so they decided to raid a former president's home in the midst of an election. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden was actually guilty of what they were accusing President Trump. But of course, as we know, later on, Robert Herr and the DOJ decided not to pursue President Joe Biden because he's elderly and has a bad memory. Oh, man. Clear bias, clear double standard, clearly illegitimate indictments. The whole case is nonsense. A double standard of justice, a two-tier justice system, election interference. This case is done. It should be dismissed immediately. I hope it happens. And wow, what amazing, courageous work from Trump-appointed judge Aileen Cannon. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.